Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newsor Education. Let's solve a few problems in kinematics, especially related to the frame of references. Uh, now, this lecture is part of the Physics 14th course offered on unizor.com. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on the unizor.com um, and basically try to solve these problems yourself. Now, the notes have answers, so you can check yourself. Uh, but I will offer these problems with solutions. So after you have spent some time solving these problems, successfully or unsuccessfully, it doesn't matter, well, then you can watch this lecture and check it against your own <coughs> opinion. All right, first problem. Let's say you have a bullet train goes 230 kilometers per hour in one direction and you have a regular train which goes 130 kilometers per hour in another direction. Here you have a passenger and this particular train has uh, 30 cars uh, 20 meters each. Considering the length of the car plus attachment to connect to another car, right? So basically we have uh, the total length would be 30 times 20, 600 meters, the total length of the, of the train. Now, in this train there is a passenger who is looking in this direction, perpendicularly to the track. Track is considered to be a straight line, parallel. Uh, two, two tracks are parallel to each other. The question is, how long will it take for um, this passenger to see the train uh, passing by? All right. Now, we know the speed of each one of these trains relative to the ground. Whenever we are talking about um, one passenger here looking at this train, we are talking about a different reference frame, reference frame related to this passenger, right? Now, considering these are opposite directions, uh, so one uh, uh, train goes into, let's say, positive direction, another is negative, and obviously the relative velocity uh, of this train relative to this passenger would be in this direction and the speed would be a sum of these 360 kilometers per hour right so the passenger will see himself as the origin of its own frame of reference and this train passing by with a speed of 360 kilometers per hour. Well, considering the length is 600 meters, all we have to do is to convert this thing into meters per second, let's say, and then we will know uh, basically the, the seconds um, which takes for this train to pass by. Well, 360 kilometers per hour, it's 360,000 meters divided by um, how many seconds are in an hour, which is 3,600 3, and the result would be 36, the result would be 100 meters per second. So that's the speed and with the speed 100 meters per second my 600 meters train will pass in 600 divided by 100. Length divided by speed, the time would be 6 seconds. So that's the answer. Next. Next we have a river. Which goes this way with unknown speed. X. Okay. Now, we have a boat which goes down the river stream in nine hours but whenever it goes back from B to A it spends more time 11 hours obviously because in this case the flow of the water helps and in this prevents right so if now my, uh, my, my, my problem is to find out what's the um, speed of the water flow now, obviously, I'm considering that the river is straight and the flow is constant, so everything is in nice condition. Um, 
Now, um, let's assume that this particular boat has certain engine which allows it to go into a, a steady water, let's say in the lake, um, with certain speed. It's its own self, so to speak, speed. Okay, so self speed would be S. This is the speed in the standing water. Only the engine of the boat works. Now, if it goes this way, uh, by the way, I didn't specify 198 kilometers is the distance from A to B. All right, now, if this is the speed in the standing water, and whenever it goes downstream, uh, obviously the flow helps. So every hour, let's say, he, the, the boat itself goes with uh, 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 along this uh, distance uh, S in one hour, and then the flow of the river helps by X during this same hour. So the total combined distance uh, covered in one hour would be x, uh, s plus x. So that's the speed. s plus x kilometers per hour, let's say. So that's the time it goes down the river. So I know that 198 distance divided by speed, which is a combined speed of these boats, boats is equal to 9 hour. So this is kilometers and we assume this is kilometers per hour, right? Now, whenever it goes in opposite direction, every hour the engine itself pulls it by s kilometers, but the flow of river um, uh, pushes back by x. So the total speed would be s minus x, and that would be 11 hours. All I have to do is to solve this system of two uh, equations. Um, with, two, uh, with two unknowns. All right, so let's do it. 198 is equal to 9x plus 9s, uh, and 198 is equal to 11s minus 11x. So we need x, right? So uh, to do it really uh, easy, we can multiply this by 11 and this by uh, 9 and subtract and s would cancel out, right? So 198 times 11 is equal to 11, it's 99x plus 99s. And here I multiply by 9, it's equal to uh, again 99s minus 99x. Now, if I will subtract them, my 99s would cancel out. Here I will have 99x minus minus 99x, it's 198x. And here I will have 198 times 11 mi one minus 198 times 9. It will be 198 times 2. Now I can cancel 198 and I have x is equal to 2. That's my speed of the uh, flow of the river. Now basically all these problems are kind of easy. It's all distance divided by time, or distance divided to get the speed, or distance divided by speed to get the time, or speed multiplied by time is equal to distance. I mean, you can, distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. So this formula can be basically uh, used in all the different uh, kinds, whatever is necessary to get the answer. Now next. Next is I have an escalator, escalator, which goes up with certain speed. Well, let's consider the speed is x, and it has certain lengths, n. So, if speed is number of steps per second, because it's very conveniently in this particular case to measure the speed and the distance in number of steps. So this is number of steps, and this is number of steps, let's say, per second, it moves. So if I want to know the time uh, when, escalati when, when escalator pulls the person from the bottom to the top, it would be n divided by x, right? Number of steps 
divided by number of steps per second it moves. But our person is not just standing still. It's going up and it's counting the steps. So it goes up with certain speed, let's say S, and it counts the steps once and it got 24 steps. So as he is going up with his own uh, speed S, it's like the boat in the standing water. This is the passenger um, on the subway, let's say, uh, which basically um, goes from one step to another regardless whether step is moving or not moving. He has his own speed. That's his own speed of moving up. Now, then he decided to double his speed and he counted 32 steps. Question is, what's n? What's the number of steps here? Now, we can think about, well, we have too many unknowns here. We have n, x, and s, and we have only basically two equations. Well, let's make these two equations. Maybe we can solve them. So, first equation. So, he, as he goes up with certain speed of his own, and he counts 24. Now, that's a good equation if I know the time. Well, this is the first, okay? Now, what is the time he goes up counting these steps? Well, I have the distance, which is n, and I have a speed. Speed is his own speed plus the speed of the elevator, uh, escalator. Right? Now, next equation, the same distance s, he covered with double his speed plus the speed of the escalator. That's the time. Now, his speed is 2s now, it's doubled, and he counted 32. Okay, so now we have these two equations with three unknowns. Now we have to solve it for n. It's actually not as bad because we can always reduce it to two unknowns. How? By reducing by s here. What do we see here? s here, s here would be 1 and s x divided by s, right? And here we will also reduce it by s. So we will have s count cancels out here and this x divided by s. So now as you see we have only two unknowns. One is n and other is x divided by s. So that's easier. Now we have two equations with two unknowns. Well let's call x divided by s y. Let's say we don't need it, but not interested in this. We are interested in n, right? So we will have n is equal to 24 times 1 plus y. 24 times 1 plus y and 2n is equal to 64 plus 32 uh, y. Okay? So, this is, let's open it up. 24 plus 24y. All right, fine. So now we can very easily determine n because we have two independent uh, equations. Now how to get rid of y in this particular case? Well, very easily. We will multiply this by 3, no, by 4, by 4, and this by 3. We will have 96y and we will have 96y and then we will subtract. So we will have 4n equals to uh, 96 plus 96y. Uh, 6n is equal to uh, 192 plus 96y. Subtract. From this, subtract this. This will go out. This would be 96. 192 minus 96. And this will be 2n. So the n is equal to 48. So that's the answer. 48 steps our escalator has. All right, next. Next we'll talk about average speed. Now average speed is basically distance divided by time, right? 
All right. Now we have a situation. We have the we have two cars. One car has decided to go from uh, from point A to point B, half a distance. half a distance with the speed u and another half a distance with the speed v question is what's the average speed well if you think it's u plus v divided by 2 you're wrong it's not again total distance divided by total time now what is the total distance we know now what's the total time well we divide distance in two halves right so we have one half of the distance with the speed u so that's the time spent in to cover the half a distance then I have another piece of time which has the same distance v over 2 with the speed v and that's the time for the second one so this is the total time and if I will divide the total distance over this I will get what will I get? Obviously, d cancels out. I will have 2 divided by 1 over u plus 1 over v. So this is the formula. I mean, you can simplify it differently. You can put 2uv divided by u plus v. However, um, this is something which is called... Uh, this is something which is called harmonic mean of two numbers. So if you have two numbers, u and v, Harmonic means is you invert each one of them, you average them, divide by 2, and then you invert again. And that's what you will get. That's harmonic. Now, another car decided to do it differently. Another car decided to have the entire time of the trip divided by 2. So he spent a certain amount of time with the speed u, and then exactly the same amount of time with the speed v. Okay, let's say the total time is t, unknown, but if you will multiply u by this half a time and then v by half a time, that would be my total distance. Now, the total time is still t, so if I divide my distance to the total time t, t cancels out and I will have u plus v over 2. And this is arithmetic average kind of things which we are used to have. So arithmetic average is if you divide time in half. Harmonic dif uh, average is if you divide distance in half. Okay, that's it. Next. Okay. you have a car and this is the wheel of the car now the car wheel makes n revolutions per second diameter of the car is d what's the speed of the car okay Whenever you're talking about rotating, very conveniently uh, to deal not with the regular velocity, which is like car velocity, which we would like to, to find out, but with angular velocity of the uh, rotating wheel in this particular case. Now, rotating uh, wheel has certain angular velocity and it's defined by this. Now, angular velocity is measured in radians per second. Now, if it's n revolution, each revolution is 2 pi radians, so it's 2 pi n um, um, is equal to omega. Omega is angular velocity, radians per second, okay? Now, if you have an angle, let's say you have time t, if time t, then my wheel turns by r times 
uh, omega times t, right? If omega is angular uh, angular um, uh, speed, then omega times uh, time would give me whatever the angle my uh, wheel turned during the time t, right? So it turned, let's say, this is angle phi. So angle phi is equal to omega times t. Now, during this time, my center of the wheel um, moved from this position to another position. Now, what is this distance? It's exactly the same distance as this, right? So the arc. So I need the length of the arc. So during this time, my wheel turned uh, on the angle of WT. Now, my R times this angle is the length of the arc. So this is basically how far my center of the wheel, which means the entire car actually, moved during the time t. So the speed is this. So that's the speed of the car. Now, if I know the diameter, obviously I have to say that my uh, speed of the car is equal to r omega, which is d over 2 times 2 pi n, which is equal to pi d n. So that's the answer. That's my linear speed of the car if the wheel gives, uh, makes n revolutions per second, and d is the diameter um, of the wheel. And by the way, um, in, in some cases you can imagine that uh, this device which gives you the speed of the car, it might actually calculate this speed exactly using this formula, because it knows the diameter of the tires, and um, it obviously can, can count how many revolutions a second the, 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 the wheel actually makes. And by using this formula, you calculate the, the speed. Okay, and the last one, I have a funicular. Now, funicular is, some, is a device which is used to move people up the mountain. So you have on the top of the mountain, you have a wheel, and then you have two cars. Now, whenever a wheel moves this way, this car goes up and this one goes down. Whenever the, the wheel moves that way, this one will go down and this up. And that's how people are moving back and forth, back and forth. All right? Now, what's known about this is the diameter of the wheel is g. And a passenger who is sitting in one car looks at the speed another car passes by. And there is a speed v which this passenger notice. Now, my question is, what's the angular velocity of the wheel which moves the whole system? All right, let's just think about it. If my relative speed of a one car relative to another car is v, and we know that both cars are moving with the same speed in different directions, it means that the absolute speed of each car is v over 2. This one into this direction and this one into this direction, also v over 2. Only then we have the passenger here uh, thinking that this car is uh, actually moving uh, past it with the speed v. So we have a linear speed. Now this linear speed is actually the same as linear speed of the uh, rim of the uh, of the wheel. So we know that this every point on this wheel is moving whenever this guy is sees another car, car uh, this thing is moving with certain um, speed which is linear speed. The point on the on the rim uh, moves exactly the same way as this particular 
uh, as the linear speed, absolute speed of this car, of this car. Now, again, linear speed is equal to r omega, where omega is angular speed, and the radius is r. So right now, well, we know the diameter, so it's diameter over 2 omega. And what do we know about this linear speed? Well, d omega divided by 2 is equal to linear speed of the car, from which omega is equal to v over d. That's the answer. So if you have this car passing the passenger here with the relative speed v, and the diameter is d, then the angular speed of the wheel is omega, radians per second. Okay? Okay, so basically these are six relatively simple problems, um, which are uh, only part of the whole set of problems which I would like to, to spend some time. Maybe there, is, there will be another set of problems, um, and that's my plans for the, for, for the next lecture. So I do suggest you to go through these problems again just by yourself. Go to the website unisor.com, go to physics for teens, mechanics, uh, kinematics, and uh, frames of reference, and there where you will have this problem one chapter, and try to, sol to solve these problems yourself again, by yourself, and see if you have the same answers which uh, I have provided in the notes for this lecture. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.